I'd like to introduce to you, most of you know him if you live in Highland Park and maybe out yonder, council person. Rodney Patrick. Good morning. Good morning, Ms. Perryman. How are you doing? Fine, fine. I'm so sure, I'm sorry these interviews are going to be a little short, but you're going to join me on Table Talk right after the show. I hope to do so. Yeah. So you, I hope so. Yeah. You're here. I'm here for you. Oh. Yes, at least somebody's here for me. <laughs> I don't know about my um, Chris Summerall. Anyway, <laughs> uh, but we have him on next, firefighter extraordinaire. Yes. Um, Rodney, Highland Park. I just read that it's an under emergency. Well, no, I'm talking about the flooding. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. What's Did people get flooded out here? Absolutely. I mean, the region took a, took a hit, and Highland oh. Park is no different. Okay. And I have some information if I could pass uh, out. Please, to, to our pass, it, pass it, pass it. That's why I have you. Um, FEMA reps will be um, on site pretty soon, and I want folks to call in to City Hall at 252-0050, extension 240 to provide some basic preliminary information about okay, what let's, happened. Okay, uh, let's uh, give that number one more time. FEMA. Well, 252-0050, extension 240. Now, that's the number to City Hall, but FEMA reps are supposed to be here at a, cer at a certain point, maybe next week, to have conversations with this information that, it, that the residents are going to provide, and then they'll work with the assessing the damage from there. I'm curious about FEMA, but... There's a lot of other things going on yeah. here, too. Yeah. Can you talk about them? Well, I'll say this. The FEMA piece had to be um, opened up after the governor declared the state of emergency. So I'm he took glad. so long to do that. He took a <laughs> long time. In fact, he made a comment like, well, it might be some more rain. Well, he's obviously, and the person that was sitting in the seat before me, we have to elect him the governor yeah. of the state of yeah. Michigan. We have the governor that now that's actually said, well, I understand what the folks have the region are going through in southeastern Michigan with Highland Park and Detroit and Warren because I had a leak, a leak at my lake house. We said, <laughs> I, I just talked about you know, that. It's, it's unbelievable to me. A branch fell on Right, it. right. Well, if he took a ride up and down blocks in Highland Park, he would have saw all the um, all the items that had to be thrown out, tossed out because they were waterlogged, water damaged, molded. And um, that's more than just a leak at the lake house. And these folks, they don't have a lake houses. I don't have a lake house. I had damage. And a lot of people don't have insurance, that kind exactly. of insurance, to take care of that. Exactly. I agree with you. So uh, we're hoping that um, FEMA will step in and do what they can do to assist us. Um, I'm guiding residents to let them know that, you, you know, call that number that I gave earlier to make sure that they um, at least get their, get their basic preliminary information in. And then we'll see what happens from there. Great, great. Because if you need help... Definitely yeah. contact City Hall, yeah. and so that they have you on the list. You could exactly. come to the meeting, see what FEMA takes care of, and everything. Because just like me, I experienced a lot of loss yeah. at my house. It's like my whole basement is out on my front yard. Yeah, because yeah. everything the water came up so high. Yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'm the same way. I had a finished basement, and I, and I hate to even go down there now because it just kind of distresses me a little bit. So I do a little bit of it at a time, and, and I'll just try to get it cleaned up as, as quickly as I can. But, you know, this happens, though. We have too much water too fast, and you have old infrastructure um, throughout the region. Um, these are the things that can occur. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what else is going on in Highland Park? Well, Monday, this Monday at the council meeting at 7 o'clock, we have a historic vote that's going to take place. Um, the Ford Highland Park project which was commissioned last year by the council back in October of 2013. We did a, um, our, 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 our study, our historic district study, and that study came up very positive. Um, we have folks throughout the state, SHPO, um, federal folks that are interested in what we're doing, and we need to have that vote take place on Monday. It is scheduled to take place. It was tabled at the last meeting. I'm hoping it's not going to be tabled. I don't get it. To, Tell, I don't it. get it. Tell me, about, what is it about? Well, the Ford Highland Park, anybody that knows Highland Park or knows the region knows that Highland Park is here because of Henry Ford. Right, absolutely. Henry, Henry Ford built the city. And as a matter of fact, his plant on Manchester, Woodward, and the um, frontage on Woodward Avenue near um, near the, the railroad tracks. Right. Well, we have gone through the process, um, when I say we, the WA3, which I'm a board member of, and also Reverend Jim Holly as well. Um, that building has been purchased by the WA3 to have it renovated so we can have a welcome center for the global initiative, which is that plant. Folks come, up, come to Holland Park from around the world because they recognize 
that that plant is, has been the start of well, the Well, and photos industry. are all online Absolutely. of the workers who were there Absolutely. and stuff. And he gave that $5 a day. $5 a day. We celebrate that so much because Holland Park is here because of that. So now we are in a situation where we have to declare that a historic district. And that opens us up to multitudes and layers and layers of possible funding. So I need everyone to come up to the council meeting at 7 o'clock to um, help me convince my colleagues that we need to go give that a yes vote and uh, move forward. Because that could change the landscape of the oh, city. So why are people against it? Are people against it? Um, well, of course, you have the, the, the current owner that uh, may not want to find himself in a position where he's being told that he can't tear down property. But the historic district protects that. And, and, and it, right. it's a lot better if we're able to say, well, here's the building where the Model T was, was born. Right. And this is where it started versus here was... Here, here's the site where the building was, yeah. <laughs> and now it's gone, and that, that loses its, its effect. And so we, we need everybody to come out to support Right, and out. that's when, again? That's Monday at 7 o'clock. This Monday at 7 o'clock. Monday is the 18th? I think, yes, it is. Okay. Yes, yes it is. This Monday at 7 o'clock. Okay, anything else? Um, we are not, we do not have an emergency manager. We are still going through the neutral evaluation process. So let me say that again, because people have misconstrued that or kind of confused by that. We do not have emergency manager. No, we do not. We have local control. We have a local mayor, local council, local government. Uh, we are going through the neutral evaluation process, and that process um, is, is it's been somewhat difficult. But we're going to um, see what happens on the other side of it. But as of today, as of right now, we do not. We do not have an emergency manager. No. I hope you don't get one because the schools has one, and I had to deal with him a couple weeks ago, and I had to cool down. But I got what I wanted. Yeah. I got right. what I wanted. And it ends up, see, people may think I'm just from here, but I knew a lot of people he knew yeah. from where he was from. Yeah. I said, you know, because he said, you know them? I said, of yeah. course I do. Right. You don't know where I've been. Well, he, he's new to the area, and he replaced his brother. And, yes. and I keep thinking to myself, wow, if I really want to make some money, I'm in the wrong business because this EM racket is it's, it's a racket. Just that. Yeah. It's a racket. And just talking to him, because he's up from that Cassopolis area. Okay. That's where he's from. That's where he's from, people. Wow. But I know people from Cassopolis, too, and stuff. You know a lot and of folks with I just don't know how it happened. But I mentioned people. He said, oh, yeah, we went to high school. Yeah, okay. I yeah. said, so you know. Ask them about me. Right. That's what all you have to do is tell them, ask them about me. Okay. I'll do that. But so. Um, whatever it takes. Whatever. I'm, I mean, I told him to ask the people mm -hmm. about me. Okay. That I don't step down. Okay. I fight until the fight is done. And we need you. Well, I'm always here. So is there, are there some other things? Give me some other hope for the community. Well, we have some things going on that, that really could, 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 again, change the landscape of the city. Um, getting back to the flood, if I could, just for a quick oh, moment. Oh, yes. One thing that was taken care of yesterday was that the waste management that does our contract for our garbage collection, they came through with a second truck yesterday to pick up the extra items that were on the curb. So we appreciate their, I always uh, wonder. I said, how are they going to pick up all this stuff? Right. right. Well, they, well, they assessed it block by block, and they had a first truck to do the regular trash pickup, and then a second truck to pick up the extra. So we appreciate that. And I, I have a warning for people. Watch what you buy at these garage sales, yeah. Craigslist, and so forth, because people have been coming pilfering through the garbage that's been thrown out with feces on it and so forth, and they've been they've been loading them up on their truck and all they're going to do is wipe them off and they're going to sell That's them. right. So That's don't right. buy any used goods right now. Yeah, please be careful. And we encourage everyone, the first and third Mondays of every month, I'm not asking folks to come to every single council meeting because I know their schedule is, is, is difficult and after you get home from work, you may not want to come back out to a, a council meeting, but at least maybe once every couple of months, come visit a council meeting to see what's going on, to get Absolutely. informed about your own community. We're only 2.9 square miles. And everything we do has a has a, an immediate impact on you and, 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 and the folks around you. So it really is. Yeah. It really is and does. Well, you'll be back with me in about ten minutes. Okay. On a table talk, and if I, I'd have you talk on some more things, okay. if we get a chance. I'll okay. Be glad, I'll be glad yeah. To. Okay, I'm excited. So you know, everyone, Table Talk is immediately after this show, and we're going to deal with the issues in Ferguson yeah. and everything. Oh, yeah. And, you know, youth in the community, right. and Ferguson is a small town, too. It is. So, okay, we'll be back in just a moment with Firefighter Summerall.